Get me that signal. We need more power. Welcome to the Voice of E, entertainment for the everyday geek. I am your host, Elliot Miller, and this is my Iron Man 3 preview show. As we all know, Iron Man 3 will be released to theaters on May 3rd. I don't know if there are any spoilers coming in my preview because the movie isn't out yet. Let's just say that I will mention the events in the Iron Man extremist story arc from which some of the events in the movie might come from, and the two-issue prelude to the movie, which was released by Marvel Comics. You know, the nice thing about comic books is that every time the publishers decide that there are things growing too complacent in their universe, they can start a new world with the same heroes in an alternate reality, parallel universe, or something along those lines. So, in the Marvel superhero movie universe, anything can happen as long as the continuity of the movie universe remains intact. So, in order to get you from the events in last summer's Avengers movie to the new events in Iron Man 3, Marvel decided to release a two-issue prelude to the movie. Rumors have been flying around that many of the events in the Extremist story arc by Warren Ellis back in 2005 will make an appearance in the next Iron Man movie. Iron Man 3. The Extremist six-issue story has been dubbed one of the best Iron Man stories ever written, and it's well-deserved. Not only is it well-written, but the artwork by Adi Granov is superb. In Extremist, Tony is facing the realities of basically being a smart rich guy who's a superhero because he wears an iron suit. His empire is built on the funding dollars of the U.S. military and the bodies of those killed by Stark-engineered weapons. Who is he without the suit? Is he a hero? Captain America asked him that very same thing in The Avengers. Extremis is a bioengineered serum that again attempts to replicate the effects of the super soldier serum that made Captain America a superhero. Maya Hansen is one of the developers of the serum, and she will be showing up in Iron Man 3. So, there's one parallel right there. The serum is stolen by bad guys, who use the dose to create their own supervillain. The bad guy, named Malin, begins an I hate America spree, and Iron Man flies to the rescue. Unfortunately, he gets his butt kicked. He realizes that his suit is just too slow. He still needs to tell it what to do, and that takes time. Sure, it's only milliseconds, but that is still too long. What does he do? What does Tony Stark do? Well, he convinces Maya Hansen to modify the only other dose of extremis in existence and inject him with it. If it works properly, it will allow Tony to directly interface with his suit. It would be wired into his brain, and he would become much better, stronger, and faster as Iron Man. Thus, Tony Stark is now the Super Iron Man. It's no longer just a matter of training anyone to use a suit and send them off into war. Tony Stark is now special, and his Iron Man takes a step above anyone else who might wear the suit. Tony goes off, beats the bad guy, and ends up feeling pretty good about himself. Because it's him trying to do what is right, not just some guy in an iron suit. How much of this will be pulled into the movie? We won't know until it's released. Maybe none of it, but I think at least some for sure. It's a good angle for providing Tony angst without following the demon in a bottle art that people keep trying to push on uh, Robert Downey Jr. But what about these the two issue prelude? These deal mainly with what Rhodey Rhodes was up to as War Machine while the events in the Avengers movie were taking place. Rhodey was halfway across the world tracking down a terrorist group causing chaos around the globe. They turn out to be the Ten Rings, the same group that made Tony invent Iron Man in the first place. They're back, and they're better armed and very dangerous. They're after War Machine's iron suit, because they figure it'll be much easier to get that one than the 
Iron Man's own suit. Of course, War Machine foils their plot, but we find out in the end that they were scanning every inch of that armor while Rhodey was fighting, and have all of the information that they need to wipe Iron Man from the face of the Earth. Meanwhile, Tony reveals that he plans to build an entire legion of Iron Man suits. That story will be continued in Iron Man 3. Let's take a look at the trailer. I'm Tony Stark. I build neat stuff. I got a great girl. And occasionally, save the world. So why can't I sleep? You elected me on a single platform. I will defend this country at all costs. The Mandarin must be stopped. You don't know who I am. You'll never see me coming. What are you going to do about these attacks? The whole world's going to be watching. The question, where is Tony Stark? Things are different now. I have to protect the one thing that I can't live without. That's you. Mr. Stark. Today is the first day of what's left of your life. Go! I'm gonna offer the choice. Do you want an empty life or a meaningful death? You're not a man. You're nothing more than a maniac. I'm not afraid of you. No politics here. Just good old fashioned revenge. You need backup. That's your department. Here's my boys. You may have seen a brief blip of Iron Man getting an operation. Is this the extremist procedure taking place? The Mandarin is played by Ben Kingsley and is one of Iron Man's oldest foes. The Mandarin was originally going to be in the first movie, but the studio thought that they should save him for later. He was just too big to waste on the very first movie. We had our first glimpse as well of the Iron Legion, which was referred to in the prelude, including a new type of suit, the heavyweight suit. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my Iron Man 3 preview show. Stay tuned to The Voice of E for more board game, entertainment, and comic book news. Thanks for watching The Voice of E, entertainment for the everyday geek. I am your host, Elliot Miller, and until next time, keep your mind free. Get me that signal. We need more power.